Thanks for joining us. My name is Mitsu Ganley. I'm the Director of Marketing here at Lumina Decision Systems, makers of Analytica. Um, we're excited to have Max Henrian, our CEO and owner, um, to share, uh, you know, just how to use ACP and some of the new features. Um, so I will let you jump in, Max. Um, a couple notes. Um, if you have questions, please feel free to drop them in the Q&A section at any point. Uh, feel free to do that throughout. And if you'd like to speak, you can also raise your hand and we'll give you the ability to uh, verbally ask your question if you prefer. Um, we'll throw some resources into the chat. So take a look at those. Um, and with that, I'll let Max Hi, then. Hi. Thanks so much, Mitsu. Um, I'm Max Henry, and I'm pleased to show you the latest and greatest features uh, in the Analytica Cloud platform, and especially the ACP Styles Library that makes it a whole lot easier to use many of these features in ACP. For those of you that don't know, um, ACP is a simple way to let you share models on the web, deploy them directly uh, onto a web server, um, typically a one run by Lumina, although you can also install it on your own web server if you're interested. And then you can share it with your colleagues or the general public, if you like. Um, and every desktop edition of Analytica even including the free Analytica uh, real, uh, version, lets you, uh, you know, offers some free sessions on ACP. So if you haven't already tried it, um, I invite you to do it. I'm gonna show you how to do that uh, momentarily. Um, ACP 3, the release 3 that we're currently using um, was, released just about 18 months ago, and we've been adding quite a few features to it, including recently. And so I'll be giving you an overview of those that haven't used it in a while. And again, we reinforce what Mitsu said. I, I very much invite you to ask questions, interrupt, if, or you know, at least raise your hand, and put in chats if you have a question. And hopefully Mitsu will alert me in case I miss the fact that you've done so. Um, but I'm hoping this is gonna be quite interactive. So let me uh, share my screen here. Um, so you will see here, um, actually that's not what I wanted to show. Uh, and Analytica model called EV or ICE. Um, and this is running on my Windows desktop here. Um, you'll see that it provides a table showing you various different uh, electric and non-electric vehicles. We'll shortly be adding in a whole bunch more vehicles to make it a little more interesting. Um, but my goal today is not really to talk with you about the details of this particular model or some other models, but kind of show you how to make them available in ACP and the different style and user interface options. Um, and, you know, like any model, there's a bunch of user inputs and outputs and so on. <clears throat> and various different sub modules here, fuel costs. Here's an influence diagram that shows how it computes fuel costs, um, selected results, a sub-module on the total cost that uses fuel costs and you know, ultimately estimates discounted lifetime cost. And just for interesting, I've got a, a sub-module here called Hide, which has got a bunch of stuff that actually I don't really want to expose to my end users, show you how to hide that away. Okay, so how do we deploy this into ACP. We go into the file menu and we go down the file menu 
and simply select publish to cloud. Um, now, if it's the first time you've used ACP, um, you'll need to go into configure your account, um, but you can sign up, just takes a minute or so, put in your email address, set a password and so on. And it will link to your, to a, essentially create an account for you. Um, <clears throat> and so I'm going to publish my model. So it, it shows the model name um, and I'm just going to call it, it can be the same as your original model name, or you can give it a slightly different one. Um, <clears throat> You can check whether you want to overwrite the model on the server if this is a new version. And after publishing, you can select, will it, should it open the ACP model folder page, do nothing, or just open the model in ACP. That's what I'm going to select here and click publish, it's connecting to the server. And it is logging me into the ACP server. And there we are, we're running the model in ACP. So this looks pretty similar to the model on a desktop, um, although there's uh, some interesting differences. You'll see, for example, that um, it has tabs across the top. So the modules here, fuel costs, and vehicle costs have become tabs, and I'll show you how to control that. There's several different navigations. Um, if I click select vehicles, it's showing the table that we looked at before that we can scroll through and decide which vehicles we're most interested in um, comparing. Um, and we can, in this case, this is a table of inputs are fuel growth rate. We can go in there and edit. Wow, given the recent palaver, maybe we're gonna put in a higher annual growth rate for gasoline costs and maybe a higher one for elect electricity due to the price of natural gas. And we can look at a variety of results. So, each of these result graphs or tables, when we put our mouse over this window, we'll see some icons here. So the familiar one from desktop is, you know, we can toggle between a table view and a graph view. And um, we can also copy this graph if I want to copy it and put it into another application. Or if we are, have the table view, let's have a somewhat more interesting one. Um, <clears throat> this is a waterfall graph showing how for each vehicle, the depreciation, you know, plus the fuel electricity, plus tax um, maintenance cost. And in this case, for the Volkswagen ID, there's a tax credit because it's an EV. The Tesla ones have already ran out of that federal tax credit. And the red is the net um, NPV cost. And so we can um, copy the graph or we can turn it into a table. And in that case, we can download it as a CSV. And uh, I'm just going to download that here. Um, I guess it's scanning it to make sure there's no bugs and I can open it in Excel. So no real mystery here. Um, these are relatively new features. I'm just going to close that up. Um, you'll 
So in Analytica, there's usually a bunch of sort of indexes that you can use to pivot graphs and tables. Um, <clears throat> I've chosen not to sh show them directly, but you'll see this pivot icon, which I can click, then it shows you these, um, the, the indexes that we can use to rearrange the graph or table. So, so now let's um, look at the ACP style library. So for those of you that have used it before, until recently, you had to lo load the ACP style library in your, um, from within your Analytica model on the desktop. You'd go to the file menu, um, I guess in edit mode, add library and select it here and then add it before you upload it. But you don't need to do that anymore since almost all of the ACP style options really only apply in ACP. Um, it's actually more convenient just to load it once you're on the web in ACP. So you select the ACP style library, it's loading that <clears throat> module into Analytica, and then it's showing this um, module user interface um, for the ACP style library. Um, and so let me just go through these options. So first there's different navigation styles. We're currently using top tabs. Um, we could use an outline style where you have an outliner on the left and I can click through to you know, any particular module. Um, um, or um, let's go back to the ACP style library. <clears throat> so, so that's, the outline style is pretty useful when you have a large model and you're just sort of exploring it. Um, when you're creating a, a web application for end users, um, I find top tabs is really the most convenient thing. Um, you'll notice the second thing, uh, show modules as tabs, you can select which modules you're actually gonna show. Um, and now we've got all those modules. Well, as I said before, we actually don't want, we wanna hide the tab, tab module. And <clears throat> so I'm going to deselect that. And now when we go into the main module, we'll see it's no longer showing. And it's no longer showing as a tab, most important. So let's go back to the style library. And you can also put your tabs down the side. Um, on the left side. And uh, just to note when you, if you have a description in a module, when you put your mouse over the tab, whether it's on the side or the top, um, it'll show you the description. In this case, the description of the main model. Um, <clears throat> so, so these tabs are the the modules that appear in the, your main model, plus optionally the main model itself. Okay, um, you can decide what color you want your tabs. If you select node, it uses the color of those module nodes, which is by default that dark blue you're familiar with. Um, or you can use the background of the module, but I find the default is usually the best. Um, whichever navigation style you choose, you can select an outline on the left. Um, again, useful for large models if you want your end users to be able to look at all of them. And um, okay, now we come to the browser window size. So, 
The default you'll find is just called browser window. Um, so basically, it'll use the browser window. You can, um, if you have a very large or small diagram, you can zoom. So you can hold it. In, in most web browsers, you can hold down the control and scroll your button. And you'll see over here in Chrome, it shows you what the magnification is. And so, and then you can scroll around if you really want to look at some piece in a lot of detail. Go back to 100%. <clears throat> so, um, you can also select a particular pixel size, let's call it, you know, if you want it to work on small old fashioned screens, you could select one, 1024 by 768 pixels. And now it's selected a size that's designed to fit on a screen that size, bearing in mind that the web browser will have stuff on the top. Um, but, but we now recently added auto zoom, which actually is by far my favorite method. And this basically just says, whatever your diagram size, it'll be resized to fit whatever your browser window size is. Um, well, down to a point, if it's um, less than half, <clears throat> then it starts to put in a scroll bar because otherwise you can't really read it. But, um, but I find this is by far the most convenient. You really don't need to worry about it. It means that we're gonna use the full browser window um, that the end user is selected. Um, okay, now let's talk about these default styles for tables and graphs. Um, maybe before I do that, I should show you this intro. There's a little bit of text explaining how to use this ABCB, ACP styles library, which is kind of pretty obvious. Um, the, and if you want more details on using the styles library, you can click this link, which will open this ACP styles library wiki page, which gives you a little more details. Um, I think for most purposes, things are obvious enough that you don't really need that. Um, so, um, okay, so the uncertainty view. So in this EV versus internal combustion engine model, there actually aren't any uncertainties. I hate to admit that to this audience that I would ever build a model without uncertainties, but in this case I did. And so if you click this, then here we see a preview of a particular frame node, and I'll explain what frame nodes are in a little more detail, but where you'll see that it shows this uncertainty view option that analytic users will be familiar from the desktop. And you can select, you know, mean probability bands, density functions, and so on. Um, but if your model doesn't actually have uncertainty, you might as well switch that off because this is just going to be um, irrelevant noise to your end users. So, so I've switched that off. <clears throat> then there's this graph table toggle icon which is on right now, you know, so I can toggle between graphs and tables. But uh, for some applications, you don't, you, you just want to show a graph or a table, and there's not much value in letting your users change that, or in fact, it may just confuse them, in which case you can switch that off. Then when you put the mouse over this, that doesn't appear, or if we go back, into this main thing here. Um, that 
should not appear. So, um, okay, then the description. By the way, as I go through these, you'll see, you know, as with any analytical model, if there's a description in the variable, as there is in this case, you'll see a balloon that will appear showing that description. So if you are wondering what any of these things mean, you, all you have to do is to put your mouse over it. So the description, um, this is a feature that also goes beyond what's available in Desktop Analytica, puts, shows the description within the graph or table result. And this controls how much of space it can take. So it's up to 20%. I can switch, put it up to 50%, but actually it doesn't make any difference because it doesn't need that space. Or I can put it down to zero if I don't want to see it at all. Um, and I find like 10% is often good. If it's not quite big enough to show, then there's a scroll bar so you can see it. So the index menus, you know, in Analytica for a graph, you typically see, you know, a whole bunch of index menus like this, which allows me to pivot things, you know, rearrange things, um, scroll through this slicer index. You're pretty familiar with those. So yes means I want all the index menus that you would see in desktop Analytica. Well, no says I don't want to see them. It just leaves the slice of it index, because this isn't really meaningful without knowing the value of the slicer index, this kind of third index. Or you can even switch that up too if you want. Or you can use this fly-in. So what the fly-in is, it shows this pivotal menu. And so initially you don't see the excess index is, but if you decide you are interested in pivoting, you can click that and it'll show them to you um, and you can rearrange things. So that's kind of a way of saving space for your end users. Next thing is AutoCalc. So a few of you might be familiar with um, <clears throat> proactive evaluation as it sometimes calls an attribute. So usually in Desktop Analytica, a value is not calculated until you ask to see the value or something that depends on it. And then it keeps it. You know, we call this lazy evaluation. Um, AutoCalc is a way to say, I want variables calculated automatically. I don't want the user have to go here. Um, and uh, when I, it doesn't want to, when I, let's say I click on this, um, <clears throat> I'd like them calculated immediately even before I've clicked it. If your model is large and complicated and it takes a long time to calculate, sometimes it's better not to have AutoCalc on. Um, but for a model like this, that only takes you know a fraction of a second usually to do calculations, you might as well have it on. So these set defaults for the whole model. Um, if you want, you can go in and uh, select um, overrides to those defaults for particular variables. Um, so these are lists of ver result variables um, that Right now, it's just using the defaults that I set for everything. But let's say I did want to, and the, I, um, I'd set the <clears throat> graph table to default for everything. I, I could say, well, I do want to have it available for some of these variables, but ones similarly for, you know, for some reason, I want to have a big description on that variable. And right now I've got flying as the default, but I could say, well, for this variable, I don't really want to even offer that. So it, so it offers you a lot of flexibility. Okay, now these bottom ones. So shadow, so that just puts a shadow behind each node. 
um, and a bevel. Um, and if we go, let's say, to an influence diagram, you can now see everything with a shadow and a bevel. My own preference is to have the shadows, but not the bevels. I think the bevels are, to my taste, are a little excessive, but you know, your taste may vary. So I'm going to go back in and switch off the bevels, but leave the shadows. Next thing, set corner node radius. So, so for these, um, each of these white rectangles with text on top is a text node. Um, and this is a frame node. We, um, and currently they are, they have square edges, but we can make them round if we want. And then, you know, let's say we go to the main thing, we see they're all nice and round. Um, I happen to think that a curvature of 16 pixels uh, looks nice, but you can obviously select the ones that you want. Um, let's see, are there any questions or, or comments so far? I see some chat here. Um, hey Max, we did have one question come in. Um, from Daniel about modifying the CSS. Okay. And Lonnie has um, answered that, so never mind. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, but the, the answer to that is just that you can't directly edit the CSS, but there's a lot of custom customization that's available through the platform. So yeah. thanks. Appreciate that. Um, so um, so let's see, one more thing, these buttons. So, you know, um, when, when you're, if you're changing, well, let's see, I'm gonna skip over that. Um, this is setting a set of model defaults, um, which uh, I'm not gonna click because I'd like to keep the ones that I've selected here. I guess maybe I should select that there. Um, And the defaults mostly reflect my preferences at this point and some others us at Lumina that have been developing that, this. Um, so save current frame view. So this is actually kind of interesting. So when you um, start up a model, normally these frame views will be blank, um, although, We've already filled them in with something because I clicked on a variable. Notice this will show you the value of any variable, whether it's a table or a graph or whatever. But you might want to, for your end users, it's kind of nice if they see something when they first open the model. Um, this one is blank, but I'm going to select, let's say, total cost by year maybe discounted lifetime cost. And then I can save current frame views. And um, when you reopen the model, at least in principle, you'll see these things here. I have to say, we recently noticed a bug in this. Um, so uh, it does work if you load ACP in desktop um, as of, this morning, it doesn't work <laughs> when you uh, load the ACP style library uh, online, but that'll be fixed shortly. Okay, so the I think the let me sh show you one more thing about the style library. Actually, I'm gonna um, close out this model. And I'm going to show you how to create frame nodes because that's something you have to do in the desktop. Um, before I go to that, this is when, when you close a model and when you start up ACP, unless you start it up and have told it to go straight into the model, you'll get a model's view of the front end of ACP. This lists 
all the models that I've uploaded into my directory, and I can just click on any one of them. These are mostly the demos that I've been talking about today. Um, and if you have multiple accounts, which I do, um, you know, I can go to the Lumina account, and then within the Lumina account, there's multiple projects. And a few of you might have accounts set up for your organization that multiple users can access. And then for each um, project, you can decide, you know, who has access, at least if you're an admin, you can decide who has access to it. And these are the privileges available to users with different roles. Um, and um, I'm going to remove Marie because she actually retired from the company a little while. So I'm just going to say she's not a member. We'll remove this user from the project. Everybody else is a manager. At Lumina, we're all managers, at least of the ACB admin account. I guess that makes sense. Um, and so with a, with a group account, it allows a bunch of users from one organization to collaborate on multiple projects and share their models and so on. So that's pretty convenient. It also gives you more sessions that you can share with your end users. So, um, so next what I'm gonna do is um, start up um, a, the Analytica portfolio planner model. And right now, so this is a model, again, I'm not gonna go into a lot of details, but that lets you um, define R&D projects. Um, so, you know, here we've got our projects all named after aquatic birds, um, different project types, um, different project areas, um, different crops they apply to and so on. And then for each project, we can specify, um, here we're looking at the Abaset project, um, for a bunch of parameters that would affect, assess, you know, what do I think is the chance of it succeeding? What's the cost of the R&D? And if it does succeed, how long will it take before production and so on? Various parameters designed to estimate the potential value of each project, you know, this could be a pharmaceutical company or um, in this case, a sort of crop um, uh, a company that creates fertilizers and pesticides and so on that it, for farmers. Um, but I, I'm not gonna tell you a whole lot more about this model since my main goal here is to show you how to do it out in ACP. Now, so I talked about frame nodes. So in Analytica on the desktop, you know, whenever I click a user input or a result, it generates a new window. And, you know, I can move these around to whatever I think is going to be convenient. But it, in a web browser, doesn't work so well, these, these multiple windows. So instead what we do is this diagram, um, you know, this is a user interface diagram where I've created a bunch of user interfaces um, uh, objects. Um, and, you know, within that, there are sub modules that have influence diagrams. Um, so, I'm going to create a frame node that allows me to look at whichever thing I click on. So a frame node is kind of like a kind of text node. So I'm selecting from the, I'm going to edit mode, selecting this T for text node, and I'm going to stretch it down here to give plenty of space to show different values and results. Um, it's kind of, I find it kind of convenient to set 
the node to show a border and show a fill color, which will be for a text node is white by default. Now, the one thing we have to remember is to convert this into a frame node. So the easiest way to do that, well, one way to do that is I just click on this, um, show me the object view button. And we'll see this is a text node. It doesn't have a title. No need to give it a title really. But I can go into the class menu. And in this case, I can change it from text node to a frame node. It doesn't really change its appearance at all. But um, that's important if we're going to use it in that format. And um, I'm going to make a copy of this frame node because I want to add frame nodes to some other modules. So I copy that, go into this project module, and I'm going to expand that. And even though this is just a diagram with no user inputs and outputs, well, aside from the select projects user input, then I'm going to do a paste to paste that node. Um, I think what I'm going to do is to actually put two frame nodes here. So there's one at the top and duplicate that and put that down here. Oops. Okay. And this one has already got. Uh, so, so now what I'm going to do is um, publish it to the cloud. And it, it actually does have frames now, so I'm going to say with frames. So we're uploading that into the cloud, logging in, and uh, but it went to Lumina because that's where it was before. I have to go back to Henry and account and look at the analytic portfolio planner with frames. So I click on that. And, and here we are with this. Um, frame node here. So, you know, whatever I click here, whether it's an edit table or a result, it is just uses the frame node here. And then if we go back to the project model, it actually has two frame nodes. So why did I put in two? Well, because I actually want to look at two results or two variables at a time. If I click net revenue, it put goes in the first frame node. Then I click NPV by project goes in the second frame node. And then if I click something else, product volume, let's say, it reuses the first one. So every time I click something, it leaves the most recent one and it uses the oldest one. So this way I can, you know, perhaps compare production volume with net revenue. And you know, this is a pretty convenient way to let somebody, you know, click around, look at, um, you know, we're doing a tornado chart um, to look at the relative importance of each of the uncertain parameters. That's these oval nodes, which are the uncertain parameters, you know, technical success appears here. How important are they to the expected net present value for the selected project? So here we have a slicer node. We're currently looking at kind of the goose. We can go to Grebe, we can go to Loon, and so on, all the different projects here. Albatross. Um, 
So let me go back to the ACP style library and I'm going to, it already has shadows. I'm going to put in rounded nodes. Um, we do want the uncertainty view, at least as a default, because there are actually a lot of uncertainties in this model. So we do want to see those. Um, let's see. One thing for the uh, cognoscenti, um, so ACP styles, all these options that you select here are stored in the ACP style variable of the model. And this tab lets you see what um, options have been selected. I don't know why it says, oh, two top tabs. That's actually interesting. You'll see, actually, there's only one set of top tabs here. Why is that? Well. Um, because we selected project model, it doesn't have submodules. Um, but if we select projects, remove details, the projects, okay, so the portfolios module has a bunch of submodules. And therefore, if we've selected two top tabs, we get, we, so these ones along the top are the modules in the main model. And then these are sub-modules in the portfolios model. Um, if we look at the original desktop version of this, we'll see Portfolios has these three submodules. So when you have a large uh, model with, you know, oops, with um, you know a big hierarchy of modules, and you want to make those available to people, then these two level top tabs, two top tabs, or equivalently can look at it, two side tabs um, is convenient. And side tabs are convenient if you have like a large number of modules, because you can see that, you know, even if we had 20 modules, there'd still be space for them at the top level. Whereas um, if we have top tabs, if you have 20 of them, they start to, you start to run out of space. So is this, showing you um, the ACP styles here. Um, most of you won't actually need to look at these. This is only for people that really want to get into the details. Um, and for those folks, uh, you can go to the ACP style page on the wiki and it explains to you how to use them. But for most of you, the ACP style library makes it unnecessary for you to look at, you know, go into those details. It's a very rare cases when you might want to do something. But so I think I covered most of the stuff that ACP I wanted to style cover. Um, maybe I'll show you a couple of other things. Um, so, so the question mark uh, menu in the top teal bar in ACP, you know, this takes you directly to the ACP online docs. Um, this takes you to the Analytica forum. And for those of you that are not familiar with that, this forum is a great place, well, to see answers to questions that people have already asked or comments or ask your own questions. And we monitor this pretty regularly. So if this is like a question that you think more than just you might be interested in, this is a good place to go. Um, and, um, or you can select tech support. And um, if you want to report a bug or another problem, um, or report that ACP is not responding or the server is down, and you'll sometimes find that this 
option is available, even though your model is not responding anymore. And it automatically fills in your name and email and your current version that you're using. So that makes it a little bit faster for you to report stuff. You can even request an enhancement or a new feature, or if you're so moved, you can send appreciation to the analytical development team, always appreciated. Um, and there's a, um, a bunch of sort of options on the close down menu, um, you know, close the model, save it, save it as a different variable, sign out of ACP directly or restart it, which is sometimes useful if, you know, something gets wedged, that's the quickest way to get things restarted. Um, so one thing I might show you is um, we have a, um, you can embed an ACP model in a web page, for example, on your own website relatively easily. So we created this website for a client to help people figure out how much they can save by installing an electric heat pump to replace that gas heater. Um, and there's a bunch of information here, but we also have an evaluation tool, um, which is <coughs> an ACP model that's loading up. It's uh, embedded in the site. And, you know, I can go through and say, okay, well, I've currently got natural gas, you know, I'm living in, you know, this zip code, um, and then I can, I'm using this electricity rate and go through and, you know, specify how I'm currently heating my home, um, what is the efficiency of my current system, and so on. So this is all a analytical model, and then I can go through and see, you know, what would be the monthly savings if I switch over to a heat pump, depending on which options I've saved and what will be my lifetime reduction in CO2 savings um, in terms of trees or tons of CO2. Um, so if you, uh, let's go through here. Um, ACP makes it quite easy to share your models, even with people that have never heard of Analytica. Um, and so you can essentially, in your models page here, um, for example, this EV versus ICE model, I can select that and click email invite. And then I can put in somebody's address. I'm just going to send it to Mitsu for now. Um, and you can edit this email. Um, or alternatively, you can just select this link directly and use that. If you're going to embed it in a different web page, you'd use that in a frame node, um, or you can copy that and put it into a regular email. So essentially ACP, you know, originally was just a nice way to share analytica models and make them look, you know, look at your, your colleagues or clients, but now you can actually use it to create a fairly sophisticated web application with a whole series of dashboards um, as you've seen. So we, we're finding a lot of our clients really like this. We're building web applications using Analytica and um, it allows us to develop things way more rapidly than, than uh, well, if you're building things from scratch or using conventional web application development tools. Any uh, questions or comments?
Um, I have a clarifying question, Max. Yeah. For ACP or Analytica Cloud Platform, who is able to use that? Oh, great question. <laughs> Which I did not prearrange with Mitsu exactly, but um, <laughs> um, so um, so the let me just go to web page. So, so anybody that has desktop Analytica, even a free version, has um, the ability to use ACP. So this table kind of gives some details. So if you have Analytica, a free version, you can publish models, um, email invoice, um, you know, save models, um, and you get a total of 25 sessions. Um, if you have a paid su subscription to Analytica, you know, professional enterprise or um, optimizer, you get 25 sessions a month. Um, and remember, you can share those with other folks, or you can set up a group account, um, basic or premium. And with a group account, you can have up to 10 users in the basic one or 25 in the group account, and you get you know, more, more sessions in each case. And if your organization, so if you're any of these accounts, you're using the Analytica, so the Lumina ACP server uh, on our cloud server. Um, if you want to do rather intense computations, you don't really want to share your server with a bunch of other folks. And, and if you're using our server, there are limits to, you know, how many CPU minutes you can do on a calculation. Um, you might want to buy a license to put on your own server, which you could be a, you know, AWS or Azure any, or Google Cloud Platform, any of the standard cloud servers. Um, and then you can have as many users as you want and, you know, there's no limit on the sessions or CPU sessions. And uh, we also find clients that want to use it on their own dedicated server, you know, partly for reasons of confidentiality of data. Now, data is confidential to your user account or within your group account, but um, the controls are obviously more substantial if you're running it on your own server. Any other questions? Thank you. Um, Daniel O'Neill is asking about Mac usage. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, you know, as you might or might not know, <laughs> we actually originally developed Analytica on the Mac many years ago. I won't say how many. Sadly, it is no longer running. Currently, desktop Analytica only runs on Windows, um, although we are uh, looking seriously at a project that would create a multi-platform version of Analytica, but that's not going to be, a, you know, that'll be a little while before that's available. Um, but for now, obviously, you can run uh, ACP on, you know, any platform that, as a web browser. So, you know, if you want to share your model with people that are Mac users or Unix users or whatever, um, you know, you with ACP, you can do that very easily. You know, all they need is a web browser. Great. I do not see any other questions at this time. Um, one other thing that I wanted to mention before we hop off is that we have another webinar coming up uh, just around the corner on July 7th. We're talking about using Analytica um, for the financial risk for the farming community. That is going to be hosted by Richard Preston. Um, and I think that's going to be a really interesting example of uh, how 
um, he's using it. And that again is on July 7th. I will drop a registration link into the chat for everyone if you have any interest in joining. Very good. Well, thanks very much to, to everyone. Thanks for your questions. And uh, you know, do try out ACP and the ACP style library if you haven't already. And uh, let us know your comments. Thanks so much. Cheers. <laughs>